there is like a constant runway that happens in New York no matter where you are. You could be uptown, downtown, Queens, Bronx, people show up and really take their style quite seriously. My look today is so 70s inspired. I love vintage pieces, so I really wanted to go for that type of look. This silk scarf is vintage from Italy. Uh, my husband's grandmother left this for me when she passed. She's whispering in my ear like, girl, you better go out there and kill it. <laughs> A lot of my inspiration comes from my relatives, my moms, my aunties, fly girls. I saw that all my life, and so I always wanted to be the girl with the nails done, the hairs done, the, the shoes, boots on, the purse. It's a head-to-toe thing. Some of my favorite pieces this season already, I'm loving the whole chore jacket, but I love the little bit of embellishment to it. Loving a looser fit jean. I still like a little bit of crop so I can show off the shoes. I love layers, I love neutrals. I think those are happening right now. And I'm loving how we're just getting a little looser and more relaxed. Sort of a new way of dressing for me. I used to be a little bit more traditional and tailored. I'm loving this sort of more spirited way of getting dressed. Walking around this city and watching how people express their style, whether they're eight or 80, I still live for that. So every day I'm looking to just soak it up and look for it. I'm looking for style inspiration all the time. This is a vintage St. John knit blazer. I just re-sewed this button back on. Happens. These little boots I got at my favorite vintage store in Miami. These I got in Venice, Italy at a vintage store. I have a vintage business called Club Vintage. When I moved to New York when I was 18, I was wearing a lot of heels and like tiny skirts. And that's not that practical because you're like, I gotta get across town in 20 minutes. And you can't really do that in five inch wedges. So even just in the practical logistical sense, I think that yes, my style is very influenced by New York City. It's also fascinating when you just go from neighborhood to neighborhood to see what changes and how people like they're all their own microcosms of style. As someone who loves fashion but is also plus size, it's often really difficult, pretty scarce. So I would say definitely like mutuals on Instagram who are like fashion influencers. I draw a lot of inspiration from them. Like I'm giving red, blue, and green, I feel like. That's the primary moment today. This is a Moa Lola hat, indie Nigerian designer. This is Probably one of my new favorite statement pieces. It's nor black nor white. The embroidery on the pants is just really, really cool. My nails are like always a little statement piece. I think what's most unique about New York style is that there's so many people so densely concentrated. And so I think what I find really cool is that you could be just sitting somewhere and see someone walk by and that can just strike inspiration for you. So I feel like in many ways, like the city is a walking mood board. I live in Brooklyn, so I feel like there's just like a lot of black and brown creatives who just have amazing styles. Like a lot of queer and trans folks who just like, I think been the leaders of fashion in New York as well. This is a Junior Watanabe, a Jean-Paul Gaultier skirt. And Saika Demonia, my sock for the Balenciaga Crocs platforms and a Balenciaga bag as well. I think the special piece is this ring because I got it like maybe around 10 years ago as a little toy. I just always wanted to make my shoulder like super super wide, just make myself feel like I'm having this like actual skeleton type of like silhouette. I really like fashion history. Currently I'm really interested in like 1920s. The waist started to go low so I'm really obsessed with like the waistline kind of around the hips look lately. I'm wearing a like late aughts Prada top that I got from Laura Kalegi down the street. This is a vintage diesel skirt and this is a Kiko Castano belt and vintage Prada biking boots that me and all my friends have and a Georgia Kimball angel necklace. My most cherished pieces are probably like my earrings which are La Mer. I'm like an anti-functionalist so it's like nice to have something that doesn't make any sort of like functional sense for my look. Like it's just, it just kind of like sits here. I have some friends who are encyclopedias of fashion, they're like every single show. That's not really me. I look 
basically like left and right. The sheer amount of people you see on the street, it could be like a really old person who's wearing something that I think is really, really cool. Like an oversized bomber jacket with like really baggy slacks. That stuff is really uh, like invigorating to see at all times. The hat is custom made for me by a friend who is based in Finland, where I'm also originally from. And I wanted uh, her to make a crochet hat for me with smiley faces because they make me happy. <laughs> the biggest inspiration behind this outfit, outfit was Achilles Ion Gabriel. He is the designer for Camper Lab shoes and he loves to wear full denim outfits and baggy oversized things. So I think I was pretty much thinking about him when I <laughs> was dressing up. I really love neutral colors, earth tones, and I also love texture, like my shirt. Um, I really love to layer, but not too many because it's really hot outside. I love a pop of color, which is where the bag comes from. I am a Brooklyn Magazine writer, so I write mostly fashion and music, so I get my inspiration from the people that I interview and I speak with and my collaborators, and I really look to them for my style. The bag is homage here. It's made by Antoine Manning, and it's actually based off of a banana and I thought it was just a regular banana bag, but really the meaning behind it is enjoying the fruits of your labor. So I think that meant a lot to me. There's nowhere in the world that has style like New York. The colors, the textures, the dimensions of New York City style is what makes New York New York. I live on a farm sometimes, and so I like to keep a little bit of that in my outfit. And I'm also a street style photographer, so I need to be comfortable. I'm from Georgia. Um, the thrifting there is really good and really cheap. Oh, this is my Stella necklace. My doggie's name is Stella, and I love her. I always get rings when I go on trips. Yeah, I just like everything to feel important to me. I don't buy things that are just like frivolous that I'm gonna wear once. It doesn't feel me. I'm not gravitating towards it. I favor kind of classic things that have like a twist. So this denim skirt is a denim skirt, but it actually has like a tall underlay. That's kind of how I, I choose most pieces in my wardrobe. It's like, how can I subvert a classic? This signet ring, I'm British, if you can't tell. And signet rings are like a, a little bit of a British jewelry and iconography mixed together in one. And my friend makes them. And this one's custom for me. So it has my initials and just lots of different symbols that are like specific to me. wearing my friend's top from Nords, a vintage Gautier, uh, unrelaged pants, and these tabbies. I always had the quote in my mind that like, you have your entire life to wear like a pair of black pants. So why not wear like black pants with like extended fabric? The shoes are like my favorite because I, I have a thing for going to like concerts and like raves and shows and everything and I, I always also needed a designer shoe so it has to be a shoe that I could go into a mosh pit with. I think the style I see a lot of in New York is like disjointed, cool and colorful. I'm a color person so I love color and I love platforms and I kind of want to do a boy and skirt moment but still kind of make it street a little edgy with a platform. I am a jewelry and ring fanatic. I buy a lot of rings, I collect rings. That's usually what I do not leave the house without is my rings for sure. This is actually from Etsy. It's a little octopus ring that my boyfriend got for me. They're one of my favorite animals and I wear this almost every day. This is like my little lucky charm. I'm usually like very into neutrals, but I saw this dress, green's my favorite color, and I just bought it on a whim because I was like, this is different for me. And it's now one of my favorite pieces in my wardrobe. We're at the corner of Lower East Side, Chinatown, and Two Bridges. The real estate is being taken up by a lot of really cool designers. Of course, Bodhi is here. Susan Alexandra is here. There's a lot of space to show color, show new design in the neighborhood. I'm all about like color, as much color as possible, and glitter. So I have YSL glasses. This is a custom Judah Studios NYC from the Lower East Side dress. Moschino bag, and then these are Circus New York. This is my best friend, 
my like one of my first friends that I ever got when I moved to New York City. Um, and the community around this designer is like one of celebrating, uplifting, supporting trans people. It's absolutely dopamine dressing. I feel like as a trans person, pretty early on in my transition, um, I'm just reconnecting with like my younger self. I really think about like what would younger Blossom have wanted? And this is what younger Blossom wanted and she's happy, I'm happy. There's no better place than New York when it comes to just street, raw, edginess, gritty style. Quintessential New York style is street style.